Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's March the 7th and we're looking today at Luke chapter 1, the second part, beginning at verse 46 down to verse 80. And <clears throat> we have the response of Mary, first of all, to the uh, exclamation of Elizabeth. She says, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. And she goes on, she's now filled with the Holy Spirit, and she prophesies, and she speaks about the joy that she has in the Lord, of what God has done in her life, and also she speaks about what God is going to do with his people and how excited she is about all that. What does she say? She says, He that is mighty has done great things, and holy is his name. His mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. <coughs> He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. Um, you know, these, these exclamations of worship and praise to the Lord in Scripture, when the servants of the Lord are filled with the Holy Spirit, and they prophesy in his name, they are magnificent magnificent she says he has helped his servant israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke spake to our fathers to abraham and to his seed forever um, these exclamations are a lesson to us all in joyful worship um, and they give to us a, an amazing insight into what god is doing in the life of these people mary in particular is she has this song of praise she says my soul doth magnify the lord now we know what magnify means it means to see something bigger to see something bigger and what she's saying is that my life my soul the lord has become bigger to me he's become bigger to me to my sight and then <clears throat> she stays with Elizabeth for three months. So she stays until the birth of John. And then she returns to her own house. And when she returns home and she sees Joseph again, no doubt she's beginning to show her pregnancy. Um, <clears throat> then it switches back to John the Baptist. It says, now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered and she brought forth a son. And her neighbours and cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy on her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they called him Zechariah after the name of his father. But his mother answered and said, Not so, not so. His name shall be called John. And they said to her, There is nobody of that, of that name amongst all your family. So they made signs to the father and uh, Zechariah called for a writing tablet and he wrote on it, his name is John. You see, there's nothing wrong with his hearing, just something wrong with his speech. And they were all amazed. But what was the, even more amazing is as soon as he, he said that on the tablet, his mouth was opened immediately and his tongue was loosed and he spake and he praised God. He praised God. <clears throat> and fear came upon all those that lived nearby. And all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all that heard it laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. Now that's my password for today. The hand of the Lord was with him. John, this great prophet of the lord the great prophet of the lord that would herald the arrival of the messiah himself it says the hand of the lord was with him he was filled with the holy spirit even from his mother's womb 
what a great man John would be. <clears throat> now his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied. You see, it's all about prophecy. We've had the prophecy and the song of praise of Mary. And now we have the prophecy of Zechariah. He's filled with the Holy Spirit and he says, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Now some people may say, hang on a minute, Zechariah, this hasn't happened yet. Yes, I know. But you see, the prophets, they don't speak. They don't speak in the tenses that we're familiar with. When they speak in the past tense, it means that that's because of the certainty of the prophecy that they're making. So we need to watch that. Very often prophets will speak in the past tense, even though it's a future event, because of the certainty of the word of the Lord. It says, He hath visited and redeemed his people. This is something that's going to happen without any doubt. He hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. <clears throat> As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The oath that he swore to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Now that is encapsulated in Old Testament theology that is the the complete embodiment of israel's purpose in the world i'll read it to you again <clears throat> that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life now the the bit that's where it says without fear that's without fear of their enemies so without any fear of their enemies, they're going to serve the Lord in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. So it's all about human life. The human life of the children of Israel is that they might live before him in holiness and righteousness. Um, and thou child, he now he speaks to the child. He says, thou child shall be called the prophet of the highest. Now notice this is in contrast to the Lord Jesus. He is referred to the son of the highest. But this one, John the Baptist, is called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. That's the whole of John's mission encapsulated in a phrase. He will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God. Whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us. To give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong and was in the desert until the day of his showing unto Israel. So <clears throat> um, the, the, the mission of John the Baptist was to bring restoration to Israel. It was to those who sat in darkness it was to those who um, are in the shadow of death. He's going to be guiding their feet into the way of peace. He's going to teach repentance. Repentance is about the old covenant. It's about how people in the old covenant are restored to their covenant God. That was the mission of John the Baptist. So my password is that little phrase in verse 66. It says the hand of the Lord was with him. The hand of the Lord was with him. Wonderful phrase. Looking forward to speaking to you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. Bye for now.